Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode 12 of my KSP campaign. Now, after starting the process of upgrading the vehicle assembly building last episode, I only have a little over 21,000 curb bucks left, so that's not a lot of money. So, But I do want to get something else into the building queue, into that second service bay of the VAB. So uh, I'm going to just uh, push another commsat out, right? I already had a commsat in the building queue. Uh, from last episode, so I'm going to push out another commsat. Remember, in the end, I really want to have four of these things, and uh, I'm just going to open this up. And just to keep things clear, I'm going to rename that second commsat commsat two, even though commsat one and commsat two are completely identical. And it's just a matter of completing the rollout of mapsat one and uh, time warping to dawn and launching this thing. Now this is a mapping satellite and the idea is going to be to put it into a polar orbit. And you can launch either towards the north or go towards the south. I don't know, for whatever reason I always choose to go towards the north. It feels, for whatever reason, a little bit more natural to me. But the thing is, you don't want to go straight north. You actually want to aim your craft a little bit to the west of north. And that's the reason. The reason is, is because Kerbin is rotating towards the east, so your prograde vector your orbital prograde vector the, uh, is already going towards the east, so you need to actually pull it towards the west. If you end up just pain, pointing straight north, you'll never get to a uh, an inclination of 90 degrees, which is what you want. So you want to start west of north and uh, keep an eye on that inclination. Uh, right now that inclination is just about at 40 degrees, and as that inclination climbs, you want to start pulling yourself more and more towards going straight north with the idea being at that as the inclination gets to 90 degrees that's the moment where you want to be pointing straight north and whoa whoa a little bit of instability i got it i got it i got it i got it oh there we are we're back <laughs> oh dear maybe i should have used uh yeah probably my center of mass is getting a little bit low a little bit unstable and once i got off of that prograde vector a bit uh Lost it for a bit there, but we're back. We're back. What's my inclination now up to? 68, 69, 70 degrees, so getting closer to north. Uh, my pitch, I kind of like. I'm just about 45 degrees pitch now and just about at 20 kilometers. I am going a little steeper than normal again because I do have to think about remote tech and remaining, remaining in contact with the mission control. The moment mission control disappears below the horizon is the moment I'm going to lose my communication link uh, inclination now 688 degrees you can see I'm very very close to north 89 degrees and I just ran out of fuel on that lower stage so it's gonna be time to ditch it but before I ditch it I do want to find my communication antenna which is always awkward to find there it is oh no I clicked on a battery Still clicking on a battery. Oh, man, I, I want to get action group soon. Come on, come on. There it is. Activate that communication antenna. All right. So, I came out all right. My inclination is just about 90 degrees. Lose that first stage. My apoapsis is already up around 83 kilometers. Eventually, I want to get this into an orbit with an altitude of about 250 kilometers. But what I think I'll do is uh, not push it up any further than that for now and just think about getting an orbit because I definitely want to get an orbit before I lose my communication link. And here we are. I'll look at my trajectory. That yellow is my communication link. I should still have communication by the time I get up to apoapsis. Just about a minute to apoapsis. You can see over there on the right, I do have a contract associated with this. Uh, and that contract is fulfilled once I have scanned at least 95% of Kerbin's surface with the scanner, with the altimeter that is attached to this particular craft, which I will be deploying once I've achieved my orbit. Okay, here we are again. Still, my communication link looks pretty healthy. 
30 degrees to apoapsis. And starting to thrust up. Oh, oh the time to apoapsis is dropping quickly. Yeah, I'm a long way from getting my orbit. I should be thrusting faster than this. Yeah, need to be thrusting harder. I don't want that time to apoapsis to get below zero. I like to always kind of keep the apoapsis ahead of me. And the only way to keep it ahead of me is to thrust up and to pitch up. And I probably should have been thrusting harder earlier, so I have to be pitching up, which of course does impact a bit on the efficiency of all of this. The further away you are from the prograde vector, the less efficient you are being. But there is plenty of fuel, and getting an altitude, I mean, all I really need to do is get an orbit. And again, an orbit, this is going to work. The 250 kilometers is just for my own pedanticness. <laughs> it, it is not mission critical. My inclination is just over 90 degrees, which I really like. I like to keep it as close to 90. It doesn't have to be exactly 90. Again, that's just me. And pushing up, and I've got my orbit. Okay. Get back there on that prograde vector, start thrusting up. Again, I just want to get apoapsis up to 250 kilometers. And then I have an orbit. I will be losing my communication link, but at some point I will have communication again over apoapsis, and at that point I'll be able to attempt to circularize this. There we go, 50 kilometers, and oh, I only have 67 meters per second of delta V left. That's not the best in the world. So, well, uh, once again, extend that in. Uh, the solar panels start generating some electricity, and I cannot extend these panels. Why can't I? Ex oh, well, the second panel won't extend because I've lost my communication link. Okay, Kerbin mission or mission control is just dropped behind the horizon. So that's it. So it's a good thing I got that one panel up, but I do have an orbit. So I will be getting communication once again. Yeah, that red dot is just below the horizon. So no communication link. But no matter, we'll just time warp around until I pick up my communication link once again. I got a message here from Stage Recovery that I got 70% of the funds back on my first stage. Yep, speed was good. It was just a little bit far from Kerbal Space Center, which of course is completely understandable. Thing that happened though is that uh, as I came back around towards periapsis, uh, well, Kerbin had rotated too far and Kerbal Space Center was still below the horizon, so I had to time warp to the point that I picked up the Kerbal Space Center when and it had come around uh, to the other side, which will take about another half a day. That's okay, we can enjoy the view as we come whipping over the North Pole here. As we time warp around, a couple of things to take note of. One, you can see that orange communication link going out to Muna 1 as it whips around Kerbin on its way out to try and see if we can encounter the moon once again. You can also see that this is what's called a halo orbit, or a pretty good approximation of one. Um, the, the, Geo, or MAPSAT-1 is pretty much always in the sunlight as it goes around, and that's because I launched at dawn. Oh, you can see another communication link popping between those two satellites. Unfortunately, neither of them are communicating with uh, the Kerbal Space Center, but you can get kind of an idea of how it'll start to work as you get more and more satellites out there. But anyway, as I was saying, this is a, what's often called a halo orbit, where the satellite is pretty much always in the sun, and that's because I launch just a little bit after dawn. If you launch at dawn or at sunset and go into a uh, polar orbit, you will just be always in the sunshine. Of course, it doesn't last uh, as Kerbin goes around the sun. Uh, your orbit will remain spatially in the same spot, but uh, Kerbin, of course, as it rotates, will uh, will you'll you'll end up. It won't last forever. <laughs> I'll just say it that way. I'm not quite sure how to say it without saying it visually.
Okay, there we go. We just got our communication link. So we're back up again. We can now start our scanner. I do like the animation that's on this antenna. Unfortunately, you can't see it because we are a little bit in the dark here. Not that I'm in the dark. I'm actually just looking at the dark side of the probe. The probe is actually still in the sunshine. There's the sun. Extend the other solar panel. Try and orient the probe so that those uh, panels get maximum exposure. Again, they are static panels. They don't rotate. And as we're waiting to get to Apoapsis, why don't we take a look at uh, what ScanSat gives us. So we just have to click here on the button and we get this little map. And of course, we've mapped hardly any. We've mapped 0.3% of the surface. You can also get this big map. And we'll just uh, speed this up toward to uh, get the whole thing to render. It res render pretty slowly. But it's pretty, you can also export, uh, export this image out. Uh, so if you want to, I don't know, print it off or put it on another screen as a reference, you certainly can do that. And there we have uh, there we have our little map. You can see what we map. Then you can right click on any particular area of the map, and then you get this expanded version of that, which you can zoom in and out of. This is a low resolution map, uh, so it's a bit pixelated. That's not a flaw in the mod. That's not a bug. It is a design. <laughs> it's meant to be uh, you know this is this is meant to be limited equipment that we have thus far. But pretty neat. And it also incorporates with things like Roster Prop Monitor, which is fantastic. Uh, once I get Roster Prop Monitor up and going, um, then uh, you'll get a chance to see that. And that should be happening pretty soon because uh, KS, uh, Kerbal Space Program has now just put out another update. We're now up to version 1.03. Actually, I've heard it's up to 1.04. I've yet to update as of this recording, but uh, what I plan on doing is simply waiting until all the mods have had a chance to catch up, and then I will be reinstalling everything from scratch, and hopefully that will resolve the issues that I've been having with Roster Prop Monitor. And of, co uh, of course, once at Apoapsis, we burn prograde to try and circularize our orbit, but, uh, well, ran out of fuel. Well, what are you going to do? I ran out of fuel and raised my periapsis up to 176 kilometers. So by no means a circle, but as I was mentioning, by no means mission critical. This is going to work just fine with the orbit that I have. So now it's just going to just leave it and let it continue to map. It continues to map whether you, it is the target vehicle or not. And it will continue to map even if it loses uh, its communication link. So this thing in... Uh, just got to do is just leave it alone. So I decided to bop on out to Muna 1 and see how it is doing. Remember, I do have to keep an eye on Muna 1 um, to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I got to still try and see if I can get it to intersect with the moon. And it turns out once I got out to Muna 1 that it was in an eclipse and losing power. Well, no problem. I'll just time warp until uh, the eclipse is over. But by the time that happened, actually, I had completely lost power and everything was dead. Before I had the chance to follow, the best piece of advice I ever heard that I never seen to ever follow. But uh, it turned out it's okay because once I once I got uh, once the eclipse was over, I could still charge up on the panel. So I turned the craft to to expose the solar panels just a little bit better. And then I did follow the best piece of advice that I never follow, but I finally am following, and that is this. Take one battery and turn it off on your craft. And the reason why this is a good thing is when you turn that battery off, uh, it won't drain anymore. And if you ever are in a situation where you're in the, you're in the night side too, too long, you have your panels not oriented correctly, or whatever other types of situations that could find you dead in space, you have that option of turning on that battery for a little bit of emergency power. Very good advice. I never seem to <laughs> manage to follow it, though. Anyway, uh, so here I'm doing my time warping, and I'm doing my time warping while keeping an eye on Muna 1. Uh, because, again, I'm looking for a moon intersection, though you can clearly see 
Uh, that isn't in the cards for the uh, immediate future. And what I'm time warping towards is the completion of ComSat 1. That's going to be my next launch. And by the time that ended up happening, uh, I got this second message that uh, the contract was to complete the map 95% of the planet. So that was great. That happened far quicker than I thought it would. Uh, and so, yeah, that was wonderful. And by the way, if you're wondering where these contracts are coming from, they're coming from, well, a combination of a couple of mods. There's a contract configurator mod, which allows people to design their own contracts. And then people have taken advantage of that and put together some contract packs uh, to specifically go along with various other things. And some of them go along with mods. So uh, I have a contract pack for Scansat, and I have a contract pack for remote tech, which you will, you will be seeing when I go to do uh, the launch of ComSat 1. The completion of that ScanSat contract, though, means I gotta pick another one. And there are lots of good ones here, but the one that's really got my attention is the Perform Visual Surveys of Kerbin near Zidsby's Landing. These are three surface EVAs, but they're pretty close by, should be able to get the Otter 1 over there without any issues whatsoever. So we'll pick that one up. And the other great thing is that I currently have the Otter 1 sitting ready to go in the uh, space plane hangar. On top of that, I also have ComSat 1 sitting on the, pl on the pad. So I gotta pick which one of these has to go first, but it's gonna have to be for the next episode. So I'm sorry, that's gonna have to be the conclusion of this one. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.